Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the second Sunday of Advent. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Grant Tange. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Dear friends, as we gather together to celebrate the second Sunday of Advent, we pause. We pause to look at these two candles on our Advent wreath that have been lit. We pause and we take this opportunity to ask for God's blessing as we begin this journey of this second Sunday. Lord God, your church joyfully awaits the coming of its savior who enlightens our hearts and dispels the darkness of ignorance and sin. Pour forth your blessings upon us as we journey together this Advent. May their light reflect the splendor of Christ, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Dear friends, this blessing, the words of this blessing are very beautiful. The church joyfully awaits the coming of the Savior, who will enlighten our hearts and dispel the darkness of ignorance and sin. We continue to prepare our hearts for God's coming, for his Son. We continue to prepare for his Advent. And as we will see in the gospel reading today, we can hear John's voice crying out in the wilderness, saying just that. He is alerting us to the coming of the Son. And in the gospel, we can hear the call, the call of John and the call of God in the gospel to love more generously, to love more deeply in our families, in our places of work, in our lives. We come to the table of the Lord today, knowing that God loves us and asks us to respond to that love, but also knowing that we do not always love as he wants us to love. We do not always pour our hearts out generously, giving ourselves to one another. And so we come to the table of the Lord, asking for his grace and for his forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son, but may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Baruch. Take off the garment of your sorrow and affliction, O Jerusalem, and put on forever the beauty of the glory from God. Put on the robe of the righteousness from God. Put on your head the diadem of the glory of the everlasting. For God will show your splendor everywhere under heaven. For your name will forever be called by God, peace of righteousness and glory of godliness. Arise, O Jerusalem, stand upon the height and look toward the east. 
and see your children gathered from west and east at the word of the Holy One, rejoicing that God has remembered them, for they went forth from you on foot, led away by their enemies. But God will bring them back to you, carried in glory as on a royal throne. For God has ordered that every high mountain and the everlasting hills be made low, and the valleys filled up to make level ground, so that Israel may walk safely in the glory of God. The woods and every fragrant tree have shaded Israel at God's command, for God will lead Israel with joy in the light of his glory, with the mercy and righteousness that come from him. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. What great deeds the Lord worked for us, indeed we were glad. What great deeds the Lord worked for us, indeed we were glad. When the Lord brought back the exiles of Zion, we thought we were dreaming. Then was our mouth filled with laughter, on our tongues songs of joy. What great deeds the Lord worked for us, indeed we were glad. Then the nations themselves said, What great deeds the Lord worked for them. What great deeds the Lord worked for us. Indeed, we were glad. What What great deeds the Lord worked for us. Indeed, we were glad. Bring back our exiles, O Lord, as streams in the south. Those who are sowing in tears will sing when they reap. What great deeds the Lord worked for us. Indeed, we were glad. They go out, they go out full of tears, bearing seed for the sowing. They come back, they come back with a song, bearing their sheaves. What great deeds the Lord worked for us. Indeed, we were glad. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brethren, Always in every prayer of mine for you, for you all, I make my prayer with joy. Thankful for your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. And I am sure that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. For God is my witness, how I yearn for you all with the affection of Christ Jesus. And it is my prayer that your love may abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment, so that you may approve what is excellent and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruits of righteousness which come through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. All flesh shall see the salvation of God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. In the fifteenth year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate being governor of Judea, and Herod being tetrarch of Galilee, and his brother Philip, tetrarch of the region of Ituria and Traconitis, and Lysnias, Tetrarch of Abilene, in the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas. The word of God came to John, the son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. And he went into all the region about the Jordan, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. 
make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be brought low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways shall be made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So if someone is interested in identifying planets in the night sky without the aid of a telescope or a pair of binoculars, then there are a couple of planets which you can spot. You can see planets like Jupiter or Saturn or Venus and Mercury. At first, you need to be able to distinguish these planets from bright stars. And you need to know which planets you're looking at. You can be helped in this by looking at a sky map, which you can easily find online. With this map, you can see where a planet is likely to be in a particular month. If you're going planet watching, then Jupiter, Venus, and Saturn are simple to find, or simple enough to find, in the night sky. These are good planets to start with. But if you want a nice challenge, then you can try and find and identify Mercury. Because Mercury is the closest planet to the sun, it can only be spotted an hour before sunrise, or an hour after sunset. It is less bright than Venus, and often very close to the horizon. You need twilight, which is that time either before the sun breaks into the sky at dawn, or after the sun has traveled its course across the sky and is set to see Mercury's light. So in 2021, just at the beginning of November, you could have seen Mercury in the mornings, getting up way before the light of the sun's dawn blotted out its grayish luminescence. But these early mornings can be worth it. Mercury has its own beauty. And getting up early to welcome a night light in the sky before the onset of a glorious dawn can be immensely satisfying. As we celebrate the second week of Advent, we have the gospel story relating John the Baptist. The gospel of Luke portrays the start of John's preaching in public, like the call of one of the Old Testament prophets. The word of God came to John in the desert and called him to start his ministry. We can hear echoes of this story in the call of the prophet Samuel. When the Lord, when the Lord called out Samuel's name three times and then he responded. We can hear echoes of the call of Isaiah also when the voice of the Lord came to him in a vision and asked, whom shall I send? Who will go for us? And Isaiah responds, here I am, send me. Just so, the word of God comes to John and sends him out. And in going out, John was to fulfill the prophecies of the Old Testament. As Luke tells us by quoting Isaiah, A voice was heard crying out in the desert, Prepare the way of the Lord and make straight his paths. All of the world is going to see the salvation of God. In fulfilling his mission as the one who was to announce the coming of the Lord, John plays an interesting role. He is a transitional character, a link between the old and the new, between prophecies leading up to Christ and Christ himself. He is the last important voice of the old age before the coming of the new age. In this, he can be compared to the planet Mercury. The light coming from Mercury is not as bright as the light which comes from the sun is not even as bright as the light from the other planets. It can only be seen right before the coming of dawn. In many ways, when you see Mercury, you know dawn is just around the corner. And when dawn finally comes in all of its splendor, the light from Mercury fades away. In the same way, the light which John brings to the world comes just before the splendid light that Jesus brings. If you were a member of the Jewish community and you knew the prophecies well, you might have been able to tell that Jesus, the Messiah, was on his way when you heard the sound of John's voice in the desert. John himself insists that his role is temporary. Just after the passage which we find in the gospel today, John says he is baptizing with water, but one who is mightier than he is coming. 
he is not worthy to untie the thongs of his sandals. He points beyond himself to the one who is on his way. And like Mercury's light is dim compared to the glorious splendor of the sun, John's light pales in comparison to the coming from Jesus. When Jesus does arrive, John's light will fade away. And John is fine with this. He is humble enough to know his place in the scheme of things. So during this week of Advent, we are in that twilight period before the dawn of Christmas. We have the light of John before we can see the glory of Christ. What can we do with the light from John? And how can we prepare for the coming of Christ? As we know, if you want to see the light from Mercury, you have to get up early to wait. And what does that mean for us? What would getting up early for us be as Christians as we await Christmas? If we look at what John has to say later in the passage that we have for the gospel, of today. Perhaps getting up early would mean that we should follow the advice he gives to his own disciples. So later, not in the text of the gospel today, but later in Luke, his disciples asked him what they should do, and he invites them to be generous. He says, whoever has two tunics should share with the person who has none, and whoever has food should do likewise. John is inviting us to love one another with abandon with all of our hearts, and to be generous. And in the second reading from Philippians, we see St. Paul advising us to do the same thing. Paul says that his prayer will be that our love for one another increases more and more. He emphasizes that this will help us to prepare for the day of Christ. We are to strive for the goodness which will only be perfect when Jesus comes in his glory. This is good advice to take in this time of twilight, just before the dawn of Christmas. If we can get this right, if we can be generous with one another in our love, and not just just to those closest to us, but even to strangers around us, then we, we will be doing what the first reading suggests today. We will be wrapping the cloak of integrity of God around us. We will be putting on the diadem of the glory of the eternal on our heads. And importantly, we would be showing the splendor which God intended us to have to the world around us. In this way, we could all be like little Mercuries, shining in the twilight just before dawn. We could all play the role that John played before the coming of Jesus. We could be announcing to the world that one who is greater than ourselves is coming. So, Let us all get up early before dawn. Let us see the light that John strives to give out and to try to get out some of our own light this Advent period. Let us hear the announcement that John is making today and share that announcement with our lives. As Christians, let us love and be generous. And let us show to those around us that the light of Christ is finding a home in us. Let us profess our faith together. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things, visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not yet, consubstantial with the Father, Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day, 
in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Conscious that God cares for us and that he wants to give us what we need to praise, reverence, and serve him, let us come to him in confident prayer. We pray for our church. May the generosity and love which John invites us to be nurtured in our Christian communities as we prepare for the celebration of Christmas. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for our families. May the light of Christ be seen in the way we treat one another in our families this Advent, announcing his coming by our lives. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious Lord. We pray for peace in the world. May God guide us to bring calm to the violence and tension of war and conflict. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious Lord. We pray for our environment. May God guide the leaders of the nations who signed the Glasgow Climate Pact that they will know how best to implement it to protect our planet and those most impacted by climate change. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious hear us. We pray for the sick, the lonely, the oppressed, and the suffering this Advent. May they see the generosity and care that marks community preparing for the coming of Christ. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious hear us. Loving Father, we come to you with hearts open and waiting for the coming of your Son. Listen to the prayers of your faithful as we pour out our hearts before you. Give us all that we need to serve you and to walk more closely with you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. This is God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and good of all God's holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings. And since we have no marriage to plead our cause, come we pray to our rescue with the protection of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy. holy. Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Booty, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you, in your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him. And with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Savior's command and formed by divine teaching 
we dare to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. How happy are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, when you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. Let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, 
you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. On this second Sunday of Advent, we have a solemn blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads for God's blessing. May the almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of his only begotten Son, and yearn for his coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent and enrich you with his blessing. Amen. Amen. As you run the race of this present life, may he make you firm in faith, joyful in hope, and active in charity. Amen. So that you who now rejoice with devotion at our Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when he comes again in majesty. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.